Hi, booktube, I'm back. Ignore this. <laughs> what are we doing today? Well, I just came from Jack Edwards' YouTube video. Jack Edwards is like a YouTube uh, book talker. What am I saying? <laughs> Jack Edwards is a YouTuber who does book vlogs. He just did a video where he reads the first line of each book. And let me tell you, I love it. So I'm gonna get all the books that I brought with me and we are gonna read the first sentence of all of them. Okay, also, I just finished this book. Mwah. Chef's Kiss. Also, look how big it is. Are you proud of me? Because I have never read this big of a book in my entire life. I can't believe I actually stuck with it. And it was so good. Not enough good things to say about it. Oh, I mean, like, in a good way, though. Like, not enough good things as in, like, like, there's not enough good things in the world. Okay, whatever. I read the first line of some of these books with you guys in my last, like, book video because I am somebody who will determine if I read the book based on the first line. I think that the first line is like the most integral part of a book. <laughs> I'm less of a cover person than I am of a first line person. It is so important to me because it kind of just demonstrates the best of the best that the author can do on like a first impression basis. If they can't do a good opening, then they probably can't do a good middle when it gets boring. I heard this thing on TikTok where this girl flips to page 99 because by then the author should be getting to the core of the book but also by that point the author is less particular about their words because they're in the middle of it so it's less like the beginning where they're trying to be all fancy i'm not a book snob i swear i'm not at that point in my book journey where i can just read academic writing and be like bravo like this thing was hard to get through and i hated every second of it but the story line was great like i can't my voice is really scratchy it's because i have a cold my like tonsils are swollen to the size of beach balls it's terrible so i mean obviously let's start with my one true love outlander dudes did i go to scotland just because of outlander yes i'm gonna be honest i actually hated the beginning of this book this was like really hard at the beginning <laughs> like the first three chapters i just wanted nothing to do with it chapter one a new beginning the first line is it wasn't a very likely place for disappearances at least at first glance actually i do like the beginning but even better than the beginning is like this little part like the little before the beginning part which i think is even better than the first line i love it i love it i think i just like jack edwards i'm gonna do a ranking <laughs> i think we're just gonna put them on this chair okay i moved it so my head would block the gross bottles right there <laughs> And then I can look at whatever whatever book I'm choosing next. Okay, I'm gonna blindly decide. Are you ready? Oh, Tequila Kingdom. This is actually the only other book I've read while here. What is this light doing? Do you see that? Okay, now it's okay. It was like flickering. Okay, now it's good. <laughs> Tequila Kingdom. This is the other only book that I've actually read from all the books that I brought here. It's good. Um, I already talked about my views on it. I'm not gonna reiterate. <laughs> One. I have a heart for every year I've been alive. I love that. Like, I actually adore that first line. The one thing I do really like about this author is she is gorgeous with her words. Like, she transports you into a different world. And I have a heart for every year I've been alive. What? That's so cool. It makes you wonder, what do you mean? Do you have, like, a million hearts growing inside you? Or the more obvious answer you kill to get the heart but then it's like who do you kill why do you kill what's your backstory what do you like doing it inspires lots of questions lovely first sentence by alexandra christo <laughs> uh, oh i have to actually compare don't i dude i don't know i'm gonna say i like to kill a kingdom better okay next book the bear and the nightingale by Catherine Arden. I can't wait to read it. I'm gonna read it when it gets all cold out. So not quite yet. So chapter one, Frost. It was a late winter in Northern Russ, the air sullen with wet that was neither rain nor snow. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> See, I'm not a big fan of like descriptive first sentences that are, that's like the earth was warm and luscious or something because it's like, that can be in any book. Like, that doesn't tell me anything that is really important, you know? And, like, the air can be sullen with wet that was neither rain nor snow in any book. It doesn't really tell me too much. So, honestly, I think this would be below Outlander, which I'm sad about because I'm really excited to read that book. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> now we're going to read the Atlas 6, 
which is like just huge in the dark academia section right now and it's all over tiktok i think it's been all over tiktok for like a year i've never picked it up until the three for two book sale <laughs> The first chapter is called Beginning. <laughs> well, I hope it's the beginning. Perhaps it was a tired thing. All the references the world had already made to the Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna retry that sentence. <laughs> Perhaps it was a tired thing. All the references the world had already made to the I literally for oh my god. To the Ptolemaic <laughs> to the Ptolemaic Royal Library of Alexandria. Honestly, I don't love this sentence. I mean, I get it. I get where they're coming from and why this would be a good beginning sentence. But it doesn't it doesn't just captivate me because frankly, I don't really care about the Royal Library of Alexandria. That was someone that set on fire, right? And like all the world's greatest literature was lost or something like that. And I get that's really cool if if that thing is still surviving in this like world but I also don't care that much. <laughs> I think I'll put it after The Bear and the Nightingale. So, I mean like above The Bear and the Nightingale because The Bear and the Nightingale could be anywhere, like could be describing anything, but this one couldn't be. Ah, this is the one I'm reading right now. This is called The Maidens by Alex M The sticker is over her name. I'm one of those readers that never peel off. Oh, that looks so ugly. Sorry. <laughs> It, has, it left a little thingy and I'm too lazy to like take it off but I am one of those readers that never takes off the stickers like I don't I don't care that much ew ignore my ugh, greasy fingers dang this is really just exposing me but it is The Maidens by Alex Michaelides 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 <laughs> oh freaking heck I remember the first sentence because I mean I just looked at it so that's why I remember it but I love this first sentence Edward Fosca was a murderer dude I'm hooked I'm so hooked I'm already hooked and then the second sentence I know this is a little illegal to do but the second sentence is this was a fact the third sentence this wasn't something Mariana knew just on an intellectual level as an idea her body knew it. She felt it in her bones, along her blood, and deep within every cell. Murder mystery. Like, I I am in love with this first sentence. Am I in love with it more, though, than To Kill a Kingdom? I mean, I'm in love with this book idea more than I am with To Kill a Kingdom. But To Kill a Kingdom kind of has a killer first sentence. They're both about death, so I don't know what that <laughs> says about me. To Kill a Kingdom wins. <laughs> so, haha. <laughs> The order right now is To Kill a Kingdom, The Maidens, Outlander, Atlas Six, Bear and the Nightingale. What will be my next victim? I thought I'd throw this one in here just for fun. <laughs> what does Rick Steves throw into the mix? Scotland. Rugged, colorful, and feisty. Scotland stands apart. That's pretty good. I would say it is even better than Bear and the Nightingale. I'm sorry, I just am not a fan of that first sentence. Oh, oh, I did not, I did not really think through this whole pile thing. The next book, Call Me By Your Name. No, the sticker is also covering up the author's names. Maybe this is why I never know who the authors are. Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ackerman. Asman. Asman. Later, the word, the voice, the attitude. I'm going to read the second sentence. I'm going to also be illegal right there. I've never heard anyone use later to say goodbye before. It sounded harsh, curt, and dismissive, spoken with the veiled indifference of people who may not care to see or hear from you again. I love that. And I know I cheated, but I don't care because I make the rules, and I love that. <laughs> that was a really good first sentence. I think I'm going to put it under the maidens because it doesn't... Oh, but it's it's like so good in such a different way. Well, I guess just going off of the first sentence, like later the word, the voice, the attitude, I think it's going to go below the maidens. This is another book that my mom recommended for me. Um, it is Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frank. Oh, sorry, my voice just keeps cutting out, dudes. <laughs> this book does not claim to be an account of facts and events, but of personal experiences, experiences which millions of prisoners have suffered time and time again. Like as a first sentence, 
I'm not like extremely captured by it, but I'm not not captured by it. I think I might have to put it below Outlander. Okay, honestly, while editing this video, I think I actually like that sentence better than I like Outlander, maybe even better than I like Call Me By Your Name, and possibly better than I like The Maiden. But also because the first sentence does such a good job of bringing the human element to a situation in which a lot of times we just look at the numbers, when really he's reminding us that these were actual people with actual lives and actual experiences. And I think that's really important. Voila. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of forgetting the first sentences. All I'm remembering is like the vibes <laughs> that the books are getting off. I also didn't finish Jack's video because I got so excited. I was like, I need to do it. So I wonder if he figured out a better way to go about this. If he did, I'm gonna be so upset because then I'll be like, dang, I could have used that. This is another book. It is a witch light by susan fletcher from what i've scanned of it like her writing is magical it's like the personification of a light snow you know it's just gorgeous and beautiful and fluffy but like meaningful Ugh, love it the first part is kind of like a letter see i've read like the first few pages i can't stop doing that like i'll read the first like chapter of a book and then i'll move on <laughs> But then I'll come back when I feel the mood for it. But oh, somebody needs me to open the door to my apartment. Let me go let them in. I am such a good roommate. <laughs> doing the bare minimum. <laughs> also, I definitely wouldn't mind doing a video where it's like you rank based on the covers because I totally also do that. But I feel like you're gonna get sick of me <laughs> ranking the same books over and over again because I'm abroad and these are the only books I have. <laughs> okay, so Witch Light by Susan Fletcher. Jane. I can't think of a winter that has been this cruel or asked so much of me. See, I like that. What did it ask of you? Why has it been so cruel? You know, like that puts a bit of personality into something that could be in any situation. I think that's gonna go above Call Me By Your Name. I think it's moved to third place. Wow. Top two are really just staying strong, aren't they? Wow. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> This one, <laughs> recommended by Steph Borer, so I had to do it. <laughs> um, the Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Isn't that interesting? Look, it's like a, a roller coaster on the first page, which honestly kind of throws me off. I honestly kind of don't like that. I don't know how to describe it. But have you ever been on the corkscrew, like that roller coaster? That's what that reminds me of. Chapter one, Rowan. The time, oh, I can't read. The last time I attended a funeral, I ended up with a broken arm. I do like that one too. I just, I do like simple first lines, but like simple first lines in a complex way, in a way that like describes the character. Maybe I'm character driven, but I also like cool plots, but I, maybe I am character driven. I don't know. I haven't explored this part about myself yet. <laughs> oh my God. Wait, sorry. But look at the, like <laughs> the dedication to the girls who dream of meeting a prince but end up falling for the misunderstood villain. Okay. <laughs> That solidified my ranking. And I think that's actually gonna be in third place. No, but it's like, it's so different. And it's hard because I know Witch Light's gonna be like this deep book that's like good for my soul. And then this book is not gonna be a good for my soul deep book. <laughs> okay, I just reread Witch Light. That one's better than this. But then is Call Me By Your Name better than it? I'm so indecisive too. I'm such an indecisive person. This was not the challenge for me. Later, the word, the voice, the attitude. No, okay. This one is gonna go in fourth place. Beautiful tower. Do poetry books count? <laughs> the first of this poetry book, Scottish poetry, is Quinn that I had overseen this region. The quilk, I feel like that would just go at the bottom. Oh, I'm actually terrified. It's like Jenga. It's like reverse Jenga, kind of. I feel like that could just fall at any moment. <laughs> I, I was trying to read it in the camera, but it's backwards. <laughs> A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy. I saw this in the Dark Academia section and I was like, yes, give it to me. See, I don't even think I've ever read Dark Academia in my life, but just the vibes, cause I'm in Edinburgh and the vibes are so Dark Academia. <laughs> So I thought, why not? It's been three years, four months, two days, and a handful of hours since the first moment I set eyes on her. I actually, I do like that. Like, it feels like he's just gonna be like an obsessive character. And I'm kind of excited for that. Like it shows his personality and like 
you're kind of like, is that cute or is that creepy? This is what I've realized. I like books that begin like that because it does start the questions that you have, but it's not just like, again, questions that could be anywhere. It's like a question with this character and I'm gonna keep reading because I like this character. Okay, yeah, I am character driven. That's the decision. But where? Mm -hmm. Do I like it better than the Maidens? I've kept the top two there for quite some time. It's been three years, four months, two days, and a handful of hours since the first moment I set eyes on her. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna go about the Maidens, but I'm sorry, even though I don't even <laughs> prefer this book that much, <laughs> it does have a good sense. I have a heart for every year I've been alive. Come on, man. Come on, tell me that is not the best sense you've ever heard. <laughs> I'm actually really proud of it. Look at my pile. Wait, I'm gonna go look and see if I have any more books. We're gonna be a little fun. How about let's rank one of my short story first sentences. And you know what, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna read the first two sentences because I just play favorites, I guess. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> this is my short story that I wrote in literally just like two days. Prisoners of the Snow by Laura Rice. <laughs> also, I just wanna say this is not my favorite opening, okay? So don't come for me. People of the frost are cold and rigid people. Their skin is rough like leather from generations of being whipped by snow and salt. I honestly feel like it would be in the top half. I'm sorry, Rick Steves. <laughs> anyway, this is my ranking. I love it. Thanks for following me along on this journey of first sentences. <gasps> what if you read last sentences and you and you rated books based on last sentences. That'd be terrible. That'd be terrible spoilers. <laughs> Especially if you never read the book and you like don't even get like why it would tie in. Like if it's like an inside joke or something and then you're like, you read it and you're like, what does this even mean? <laughs> yeah, never mind. That'd be a terrible idea. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to show you what the ranking was, which was the whole point of this. So one second. Luckily I still have the pile up because I'm so lazy. <laughs> First place is To Kill a Kingdom. Second place is A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. Third place is The Maidens. Fourth place is Witchlight. Fifth place is Fine Print. Sixth place is Call Me By Your Name. Seventh place is Outlander. Eighth place is Man Search for Meaning. Ninth place is Atlas Six. Tenth place is Rick Steves. <laughs> and eleventh uh, place is Baron the Nightingale. And twelfth place is that one poetry book. <laughs> Okay, bye. Have a great day. Oh, and let me know if you would like rank these differently because I, kn I know my taste is not everybody's taste. And I'm curious. I'm so curious because like we're all so different and we like different things and that's so cool. Okay, <laughs> bye for real. I hope you guys have a great day.